This is Lucinia Scott from the Parks on the Air News Desk with your month ending January 2022 Parks on the Air update. Be sure to visit parksontheair.com for information about the program and poda.app for spotting park information, leaderboards, and more. And now, Parks on the Air news. Parks on the Air recently launched a new park management platform giving park managers a quick and easy way to manage their parks. As a result, we have recently brought 10 new programs into the Parks on the Air family. Keep your radios ready and listening for activations from Jamaica, Finland, Azores, Estonia, Guatemala, Bulgaria, St. Kitts and Nevis, South Africa, Ecuador, and the Russian Federation. With the growth of POTA DX, we are always looking for DX volunteers to help bring new entities online. If your country, or one you'd like to represent, is not yet part of POTA, please reach out via the Contact Us link from ParksOnTheAir.com and we'll help you get started as a volunteer country administrator. January also marked the completion of the Winter Support Your Parks event. In spite of the cold, 582 activators put 747 parks on the air from 23 different DX entities. With WA7PBE making the most activator QSOs, KE0MME activating the most parks. On the hunting side, N3XLS made the most hunter QSOs and also hunted the most parks. In DX during the event, VE3XNS made the most DX QSOs as an activator, and JF7RJM activated the most parks. In the club category, K4YTZ took home the prize as the club that made the most QSOs during the two-day weekend. And now for the monthly stats update. Beginning in 2022, we'll be shifting our focus during the monthly updates to spend more time talking about the number of activations. After all, that's what POTA is all about. Winter is certainly not slowing down the amount of activity in POTA. During the month of January, there were 7,702 activations out of 8,016 attempts, made by 1,472 activators from 3,105 different parks located in 32 different DX entities. The top activator for the month was K4NYM, who did 142 activations from 62 different parks. The top hunters for the month were CU3HY, who hunted 909 parks, and N3XLS, who made 1,662 QSOs as a hunter. We'd like to call special attention to the fact that this was the first time a DX station topped the overall charts during, the, during our monthly updates. Congratulations, Mike. In our POTA DX corner, just like last month, England was our Region 1 leader with 42 activations, Canada was our Region 2 leader with approximately 315 activations, and Japan was our Region 3 leader with 299 activations. The top DX activator for the month was JF7RJM with 59 activations from 45 different parks. Congratulations to JF7RJM and Japan for the first month where the DX category charts were topped by a station outside of Region 2. And last but not least, let's check in on the progress of the Bailey Sprott Challenge. In 2021, N5HA and W9AV each managed to hunt a park every single day, so in 2022, we're following along to see if anyone else can match their feet. At 30 days into the month, we have five activators who have activated every day of the year, WC1N, KE8, PZN, N2NWK, KB3WAV, and KD4MZN. We also have had 91 hunters who have contacted an activator every single day. To all of the Bailey Sprott chasers, congrats on your success so far, and we look forward to seeing how you do throughout the year. For January's bonus feature, we're going to touch on one aspect of logging that sometimes causes confusion. What is the difference between station and operator in the ADIF files, and how does POTA actually use them? At its most basic level, we only need to look as far as the ADIF standard. The station call sign is the logging station's call sign, or the call sign used over the air, and the operator is the logging operator's call sign. One of the most common mistakes we see is activators putting things in the operator field that aren't call signs, things like names and initials. In most situations, when an activator is out by themselves, they are both the station and the operator and should have their call sign in both fields. 
The only scenario in POTA where you would normally have a different station and operator is when you are doing a club activation. The call sign being given over the air is something different from your own. Refer back to the ADIF definition of the logging station's call sign, i.e. the call sign used over the air. The way this is used in POTA is so that the club, i.e. the station, can do the activation, but members of the club who aren't actually giving their own call signs over the air can still get activator credit for the QSOS where they are the operator. Because this is a single contact, it is stored once and the hunter gets credit for one QSO. The station and operator fields are not intended to be a way to shortcut logging if two people are activating together and giving both call signs over the air. If this is done, the system would behave as though one of the activators was a club and the other was an individual. This would only store one QSO and the hunter would only get one credit. Furthermore, some of our monthly reporting and SYP event data would exclude the call sign in the station field when we are evaluating totals for individual prizes because it looks like a club log. If you are passing the bike and both making contacts, you both need to submit your own log so that you don't shortchange your hunters or yourselves. This concludes our January 2022 Parks on the Air update. Thank you to everyone who provided pictures for us to share during the video updates. We'll be cycling through them over the next several months. If you have pictures you'd like to see during the video version of these updates, send them to November 3, Victor Echo Mike at parksontheair.com. As always, the team at Parks on the Air wishes you safe activations and happy hunting. 73.